Thank you, Amanda. Um, and thanks to Trouda and the COVID staff and the media team here for making this event happen. I'm really excited to, to be here. Um, I'm Emily Lim Rogers. I am the Mellon Postdoctoral Fellow in Disability Studies at COGIT and uh, the Departments of American Studies and the Program in Science, Technology, and Society. I'm an interdisciplinary anthropologist and historian who works at the intersection of disability studies, STS, and American studies. Broadly, I'm interested in what happens when forms of debility emerge in ways that strain Western biomedicine's current paradigms for understanding bodies and treating disease. I'm also interested in the inverse, how these emergent forms of chronic illness and, and disability are pushing against the internal consistency of Western biomedicine itself. Uh, while at COGIT, I'm writing a number of articles um, off, based off of my dissertation research, uh, which is entitled Clinical Proximities, Chronic Fatigue Syndrome and Biomedicine's Binds. Uh, in it, I look at the politics of chronic fatigue syndrome and um, also known as myalgic encephalomyelitis or MECFS, and there's a lot of politics to naming as well. Um, but rather than ask, is it real or not, I consider this contested terrain as a rich window into the fraught workings of American biomedicine, including its imbrications with a for-profit healthcare system, gutted social safety net, arrangements of capitalism, and gendered and racialized divisions of labor. MECFS has its own particular history, and the contemporary ramifications are lived out in specific ways by the patients who live with it. The history of how American culture has understood fatigue, the hallmark but by no means only symptom of MECFS, is shot through with understandings of the laboring body. And uh, second, MECFS is profoundly and sort of disproportionately debilitating, yet receives very little attention. For instance, it is the least funded by the NIH per disease burden uh, of any entity in the, in the US. People with MECFS struggle to get on disability, yet they have no treatments, and most of them are unemployed, yet with little, if any, financial support from the state. All of these I talk about in the dissertation through an archival excavation of fatigue and through four years of immersive ethnographic research with an MECFS patient activist group. So the dissertation certainly explores the specificities of MECFS and aims to place it in its particular material context. But since beginning this project in 2016, I've always seen MECFS as an opportunity to scale up, to examine how American biomedicine works when gendered contested illness, illnesses emerge. But all of this has been made, as Amanda alluded to, all, all the more urgent in the aftermath of COVID-19. As long COVID emerges, MECFS is a means into, for example, why we know so little uh, about post-viral illness. The decades of dismissal MECFS has faced is an important lesson into the tensions that happen when debility exists without medical explanation. It has also been inspiring uh, to see a nascent coalition building between long COVID groups and MECFS activists, despite the fact that there are actually a lot of underlying um, frustrations that people with MECFS have lived with this for decades without the sort of interest that long COVID has, has suddenly been, been met with. Okay, so speaking of coalition building, during my time at COVID, COGIT, <laughs> one of the articles I'll produce is uh, called Viral Entanglements. This paper zeroes in on coalitions between lesbians with MECFS and AIDS activists uh, in the 1980s. I ask how it came to pass that, for a brief moment at least, uh, MECFS was understood as a lesbian health yet how the elusive concept of lesbian health proved not enough for the disease to gain a constituency and become a public health emergency in the way that AIDS uh, was and that long COVID may, may actually become. So I'm thrilled to be able to further explore the many different balances of this project with the support of COGIT. Uh, and I'm so excited to be in conversation with you all this semester. Thanks for tuning in.